Hello all you imperfect artists. Today we're going to do a quick video um, with some items got that I got at the um, Dollar Tree or as I like to call it the Dollar 25 store because with inflation the dollar store is now a dollar 25. So um, this is super cute. So I'm doing a Valentine's box because um, it's almost Valentine's Day but you can really do these little boxes for any holiday or birthday or whatever. And they really kind of hold, you know, they'll hold something nice and sweet. Um, you can give this to your significant other, your, you know, your kids, your sister, your whoever's in your life, you know, uh, you know, something like this. If you wanted to do just chocolates and you wanted to give something special to your kid that plays video games and you wanted to do, um, what are they, PlayStation cards or whatever? I don't know. My kids don't have PlayStation, so um, they game on the PC. So, but you know, you know what I mean. Just throw a little gift card in there, and you know, you could do it for Easter. You could do it for anything. Um, last year, I did one of these with Easter. Let me see if I have it. I I use I try to use things that I make. So last year we went over the bunny butt crate, and. I keep some of my Sizzix dies in there, and it's nice for that. Um, but yeah, so this is a really good craft, and it's fun. And I went to the Dollar Tree yesterday just to get some lollipops and ended up coming out with some stuff. So let me show you. I only got one of these, so I'm going to kind of turn this around and show you how I did this. So let me get this paper out of here. So at the Dollar Tree, they have these like permanent glitter paper, vinyl paper stuff. And I do, I do a lot of Cricut crafts. And so when I see this stuff at the Dollar Tree, I'm kind of like, I was my first, my first instinct is to stay away from it because I mean, I don't know. Not that I'm judging the Dollar Tree, but I don't know how the quality of it is. But for this project, I thought, hey, it's glitter. It caught my eye. And I could use it for cards or I could use it for this craft. So let me show you. Um, and they also have... The Dollar Tree has really upped its um, craft section. They have these little ornaments. They're, you know little laser cut wood ornaments and they have all kinds of them they have some that aren't painted that so see that one's not painted I could paint that any color I wanted if I wanted it purple and then this one's probably an oops one um but it works um and then they have some that say kiss me and then they have some with lips but I just went ahead and just got one package because I didn't want to overspend, which is very unlike me because I love to get all kinds of stuff and overdo it, but I didn't do that yesterday. It was very good. And they have these little roller cutters, and I do a lot of rotary cutting with, um, you know, sewing and, you know, my sewing projects, but I don't want to use a, a rotary cutter for my paper projects. And I've never tried a rotary cutter for my paper projects, so I thought, eh, it's a dollar twenty-five. Let's try it. And then they have these little cutting mats that obviously these two go together. What I wish they would come out with is a ruler, um, like a nice clear ruler to use with this. But they they haven't gotten that far yet in, in the craft department. So you could go ahead and use any ruler. A uh, clear one is kind of nice because you can see what's going on. You don't have to have any of these things, but um, it's just nice to have a nice straight cut. So let me go ahead and get started and show you how I do this. So when I take the vinyl out of the package, I really don't want to work with this big piece. So what I do is I just kind of, you know... just kind of cut a little bit off. You know, I can go ahead and straighten up this edge. 
and I don't want to be working with a big bulky piece. Oop, I'm dropping everything in my craft room. And I'm going to kind of square off these edges. So if you've never used a rotary cutter, I actually have one of these open. One of these is going to go up to camp with me. And this one's already open and it works pretty good. I wouldn't recommend, wouldn't recommend um, using this with kids because this blade is really sharp. And obviously it's not, it's not like a Fiskars or, you know, one of the nicer ones. This is kind of hard to push up and down, this, this, um blade guard but it's dollar 25 and you know I don't have any kids that come up here and play so so when I'm cutting this if you never used a cutting mat I want to line you know at least one side up and try to get it as even as I can because we're going to square up the edges and the um, width of this is when I measured it was five and a quarter. So I'm gonna measure over to five and a quarter. Now, oftentimes with Dollar Tree things, not everything's even. And you're gonna run into that with this project because these slats are kind of wonky. So some of your strips that you cut, you have to kind of adjust for that. So now I'm just gonna see if I can square off these sides. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to. It's just easier to make sure that everything is perfectly square. And I'm working on it. Kind of messed up on that part. So if you were, if you didn't have this ruler, but you had, you got the mat and you got a cutter, even if you don't have the cutter, what I would do is say I just had this and I didn't have this, but I had a ruler. What I would do is I would measure everything out the best I could with my ruler and I'll make sure the and then I would draw a line let me get a pen and then I would just take my scissors and try to cut on that line as even as possible now this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not building a house. I'm not making a quilt. This side didn't seem to wanna. Okay. All right. So when I did this side, I did black, silver, black, and I think the side I'm gonna do is silver, black, silver. So I'm going to, I already measured it out. So I would say this slat is about, you could do three quarters, but what I found when I was doing this was when I cut the paper at three quarters. In some places it was a little bit too much and I had to fold it over and it just looked awful. So I want to do a little bit under and what I found was five eighths seemed to be okay. So let's see if that still holds true because I did this this morning and I don't think my caffeine had really kicked in yet. So we'll see. 
And then I was told um, that the insurance adjuster was coming. And um, my house was a mess, so kind of got thrown off kilter this morning. <laughs> so I'm going to cut that. And mine kind of went like this because I'm kind of at a weird angle, but that's okay. So that weird angle actually fits really nice on this one. So I'm going to use that there. So you can kind of, I don't know if you can see, but this slat kind of goes down. And so I think this, this one will work good. I always try to see what it looks like before I take the backing off. What I did find was if you put this on and you need to pick it up and readjust, it does stick nicely back down. I wouldn't do it. A whole bunch of times but it seemed to stick very nicely now if you didn't want to buy any of this paper from the Dollar Tree but you had some really nice um, card stock at home you could it's the same thing you would just have to glue the other side of your card stock or you know scrap of paper now this is kind of over the edge a little bit, so I'm going to just cut that. Okay, and let me get my tacky glue going. All right, so for the black, my dogs are going to bark. Sorry, guys. I already have some little pieces. From this morning when I did this. so it doesn't slide. Like I said, I'm at a weird angle. Make sure that it fits and it looks pretty good. One piece of silver is just sticking to me. It's irritating me. Okay. Look how pretty it looks even on the other side. You know, I wouldn't use this permanent vinyl on a mug. If you work with vinyl, I mean, you know. I wouldn't say that this... I mean, I haven't tried it, but... I don't know. I just don't think it would be... I think it's good for this craft and I think it would be good if I because I make cards too so I think if I were to incorporate it in my card making so I was playing around let's see I was just playing around with a design the other day and a lot of my cards I like to have glitter um, I don't know what I'm gonna put here yet or I was just playing around and so I think for for you know a little splash of Glitter, I think these would work great on my cards. So I think I'm probably going to go back and get more colors just to add to my stash. And I know I've mentioned it before in some of my videos, but I do, I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Not a very good salesperson, but um, I'm mostly a demonstrator for my own personal use, so I buy a lot of it. 
But I mean, even the demonstrators, they, they have to try and get their stuff wherever they can. So I definitely think this is a good, a good asset to use in card making. Just my opinion. So if you wanted to only use these two colors, they didn't have a red glitter, or I probably would have gotten that. But if you wanted to use all one color, you know, I mean, that roll is going to last you. If you wanted to make multiple boxes and you have some really, you're really good friends with the ladies or men at the office, I mean, this is a cute gift, you know, you buy five or six boxes and a couple of rolls of things and some lint chocolates and voila, you get a cute little gift. And you don't have to buy anything that says love, you can just buy a plain heart because that's what they have at the Dollar Tree. So for this, I'm not sure. Should I do pink on this side, red on this side? And you can also get your tacky glue. I just use tacky glue to glue it on. This is a really old bottle that I found in the deep, dark depths of my closet. So I figured, oh, let's see if it works. Let's get, let's get some use out of it. Um, I try not to put it on very thick because I don't want it to spread out. Um, when I push it down, I don't want the glue to spread out of the edges, so just gonna even that out and look at that and then you just put your paper in now I didn't have any paper um, so I'll show you a trick to that and this is really gonna show you how much of a hoarder I am but um, hold on let me show you what I did So I have my paper. This is not cardstock. This is just colored paper. And because I couldn't find any crinkle paper when I and I did look, but I didn't find any. The Dollar Tree is kind of um, it's hit or miss right now. You don't know what you're gonna find. I have one of these. Um, it's I don't know what it is, but it crinkles your paper. And I got this for free in a free box at a yard sale, and I think everybody just overlooked it because they didn't know what it was, but boy, I did. So, um, even my husband looked at me funny when I picked it up. So it crinkles your paper. Now, I have a paper shredder, so um, my paper gets shredded, but you could, you know, just cut it up and put it into strips. I mean, granted, my paper shredder is easier, but if you needed, you know, simply paper in a pinch, there you go. Now, I will say, because my paper shredder shreds it kind of crazy, I will show you. So here's the bottom. It puts them in these little, tiny little pieces, and it works, but... I'm afraid it's going to fall through those slats. So I just have an old, you know, a note card that I kind of trimmed down to fit in there. And I think it fits in there pretty good. And then I can just put all of my shredded paper in there. And it works. So. So all in all, I, what do I have invested? I have one, two, three four, if you include the glue, five, six, you know, seven, you know, at $10 I have invested, you know, maybe a little more, but I can get a lot of cards made or a lot of boxes made with this. So I don't know, 
it's a cute gift and you know it comes from the heart because you made it so i hope you enjoyed my little quick dollar tree craft <laughs> have a great day